Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about world building and magic systems, societies, people, the geography going on in your world, all that sort of stuff. This I don't want to make this a super long video. I'm going to give a very sort of basic sort of stepping stones of what you need to do to sort of accomplish this goal within only one week. I'm doing this series called How to Write a Book in Six Months. It's a process that I'm currently going through, so I'm going to see if this even works for myself. And I'm really excited to get you guys involved with that and see if you could write a book in six months. Even if it takes longer than six months, that's okay. This series is to help people stay sort of accountable and get their writing goals accomplished every day, but you do not have to follow this a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. If this timeline doesn't work for you, like figure out a timeline that does. Uh, this is more just to give the framework of basically how to get the stepping stones going of finishing a book. Um, and I'm sort of doing it in a rapid time. I'm trying to accomplish it in only six months because I want to be a published author and and I want to be able to get a book out done in a year. So it actually takes me six months to write the book, but it also takes me six months to do revisions because it goes to beta readers, comes back. I got to do like whatever revisions I got to do. And that's like typically a year process. Um, so this six month is write a whole book in six months, get it revisioned in, in six months and finish it in a year. That's uh, the sort of flow I'm going with. So if you're new to this, I would love for you to go along in this journey with me, go back to the other videos and watch them um, and come back here. But today we are going to be focusing on world building and outline. So first things first, this is more epic fantasy, fantasy sort of genre. Um, and you can skip this if you want to, if you don't have a magic system or not, but we're going to be focusing on magic systems first. Uh, the reason being is because your magic system can interact with your world a lot and interweave um, a lot of the other things that affect the rest of the history of the world. Um, at least that's what I try to do in my world building. I want to be able to have my world building interweave with my characters, um, my conflict, my themes, and all of that as much as possible. Avatar The Last Airbender is the quintessential example when it comes to world building, blending in with the conflict, the people, the culture, the geography, everything. Because each kingdom is based off of an element. So you have like the Earth Kingdom, the Fire Nation, uh, the Water Tribes, the Air Nomads, and geographically they're all sort of broken up, right? So it makes it perfect when all of these nations are sort of at odds or because of the Fire Nation, uh, you have a person who's able to uh, wield all of these elements into one and bring everyone into one unified everyone's all together right uh, that's what the avatar does it brings people together and and unifies all of the nations because he has the power or she has the power to be able to wield all of these elements it's a great example playing with like theme of uni unifying everybody it builds its magic system into its world and its people and its cultures it honestly is a really good example for this so how exactly do you go about in breaking this down so with your magic system um, um, you want to keep all of that stuff sort of in mind. I typically, I've been playing and messing with this magic system uh, for years and years and years now, uh, but I want to make sure that my magic system is very important to the main conflict that is going on and have enough nuances in it uh, that creates mystery and creates another sort of tension um, in my story. So I want to make sure that my setting and my magic system um, have tension, bring a new sort of tension into the story that I'm trying to tell. And I don't really have a great way to break down magic. You can go reference uh, Sanderson's three laws. I don't really follow them, but they're a good sort of heads up on what you should be looking for in your magic. But basically, in essence, I would just encourage you to make a magic system that um, has decent amount of consequences. Uh, it is integral to sort of the people, the culture, the technology that's going on. Um, you can either make it a hard magic system with a lot of rules or soft uh, magic system system where it has more of this awe and mystery to it. Typically you land somewhere in between, but you want to be able to justify what your magic system does. But that the biggest part that I want to hit home is that um, it plays an important part in your conflict um, and it's satisfying when it's used and, and you want it to be able to affect your world and actually show it living and breathing within the world. And it's not just like, all right, I'm just going to slap this thing on here. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to be very intentional of how um, you're incorporating your magic system into your world, which gets us to the next thing. So when doing world building, I would actually not focus on the entire world at a time. I would only focus on one or two regions at a time. This is how I'm writing my books. My first book is only focusing on one to two countries and setting up the main conflict between these two uh, countries in my main sort of series that I'm going to do. Um, so I would focus on one to two 
countries and spend only five days on each a roundabout. Um, the first day for me, since sort of character is more of the big thing I want to emphasize and morality and the way that people think. I actually start with religion and morality, the way people think. Um, so I'm making up my own sort of religion and I start with the basis freedom of expression. That's sort of what I'm going through here. Um, and it, that is very like ambiguous um, and actually could lead to a lot of corrupt things, um, which is elements that I want to play with within this sort of uh, religion. In this country that I have, the, the morality is very ambiguous. Uh, that's, I guess, basically how I'm going to be able to put this, but I'm going to be pulling from other sort of religions and seeing how, what they do and how I can incorporate my own sort of uh, philosophy and thinking uh, that I'm thinking this country is going to go through and then make sure it's uh, decently consistent and it has its own sort of little history going on with it and I will just do a main basis for the entire country of like this is the religion of this co country but actually what is going to happen is when I go and then I break down my regions on day five I'm gonna see how other countries are actually affecting the outer rims of this country and their religion and stuff like that but I'll get into that later biggest thing you want to do is not be too derivative of other countries and create your own unique uh, sort of spin on things and make sure that it's pretty disconnected you can have influence and inspire, but you don't want to appropriate a culture. Then after day one, after I figure out their whole religion, I do all my research and everything and make like a whole like hierarchy or what they believe in or their God or their um, ideologies, whatever it might be. I'll go to day two and I will focus on their history and their politics uh, because those are uh, very interweaving, obviously. So um, I will focus on the political matters and the, and the history and I'll start with just things that will matter for this story in particular. Like I said, I am actually building my world out into like five smaller books that will help me prepare for my big epic that I'm trying to do. So I'm only going to focus on the history that matters to this country and my and the other country that are in conflict together. Um, and I'll go back probably just like 100 years and try to do something that's um, semi-complex and sets up why these countries are at war uh, now. And I won't really get too detailed until it becomes the main sort of complex within the last like 100 years, but I'm only going to focus on that. I'll obviously do some bigger world things that might be like 3,000 years ago, the prophesied, da 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 da, whatever, but I won't really try to like fill in all of the gaps. One thing that Brandon Sanderson says is uh, world building, you want to see people People want to see the iceberg on top and assume that you sort of have all of this figured out under the water. But he says what you're actually going to do is it's going to be like a hollow iceberg, basically. And you want everyone to think that you've done all this groundwork. So you only want to do enough for people to be like, oh, okay, he's got this whole world building thing figured out. That's cool. I see what he's doing. I'm not really going to ask too many more questions. Um, but you want to do enough that leaves that sort of like mystery, right? Uh, and that's the hard sort of balance that you want to do. So don't spend too much time on this. I'm only going to be spending a day on it. I might spend two days. Uh, I, just to be very clear with everybody, I am actually a little bit behind because I went on vacation and I came back and I'm trying to get caught up on everything. But this is a good thing to be like, okay, I know my next step that I need to do. After the history histories in the politics, uh, the next day I will focus on their main exports, their trades, um, the architecture, their clothing, their technology, and how all of that affects like their society. Um, I'll probably put in like, ooh, a fun festival here, a fun festival there uh, that some people observe in certain areas, uh, but I really, I won't go too in depth with that. Just mainly how their trade is working and how that's affected history and sort of the main, the main export that they have, their agriculture, how does everything look, how do the people look, um, how do, how do they dress, what does that look like? Um, that way, when you get into the actual book, when you run into somebody like that, you'll know a basis of how to sort of describe them um, and paint the world. This is where everyone's going to see everything visually. So I want to make sure everything visually is decently striking um, or when you spot somebody with a certain clothing, you're going to be like, okay, I know they're from this region, blah, 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 um, if you're really looking into it. And I think this is one of the most important pieces of it. The history and politics is fun, um, but you want to be able to recognize people when they walk in a room or how they speak. That's another actual step in my world building I want to add is to on that day, I actually will like try to figure out a certain like 
talking pattern or how they speak the common tongue um, if they have slight accents and you can be able to tell uh, people from different areas because of their accents you can be able to tell because of their clothing because of blah 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 um, and I want to make that all very evident so when you're reading the story you're like okay I recognize that piece of clothing he's from that sort of country or it could be very misleading right uh, they could be wearing that as a disguise and then you hear them talk and they don't have that sort of accent that's all the stuff that I'm sort of playing around with and want to make sure it's uh, much richer when we have interactions with people. To be honest, that whole process will probably take me like two days, two to three days. Um, <laughs> I left a lot of room in the three months in between that I should be writing every day uh, so that I could have this buffer with my world building and make sure it's everything that I want it to be. Uh, with Yeah, I'll get into the writing process later, but we're just going to focus on the outlining. Then finally, once I have that basis, I then am going to go into each different region um, and sort of look at what each region has to offer the different trades exports all of that um, and then how religion affects everyone differently the further away you get from the capital um, if you border another country what does that country believe um, and maybe you have some influence on your religion over there it shouldn't get too complicated like don't get very muddled in the details but just like just know the main aspects of the story that you are going to sort of follow. You want to make sure those are rich. You can make the other areas like, oh yeah, they like have this over here, but you don't have to explain it too much. Only when the story takes place over there, I would recommend to be like, okay, you're going to go into more detail. You set up the certain blocks of how you want it to be uh, framed out. Now you can take those blocks, go into more detail of how to do that. The biggest thing that I want to recommend is don't spend too much time on things that aren't really going to affect your story too much. That's my only advice if you want to be able to finish your book within a year um, or six months like I've talked about. Um, but like I said, this is a time frame for anyone who wants to create any story. Um, you can do whatever you would like. Um, after that, I then build out the map. So I have all my regions, how they should look, what's their main export, um, and then what are their main cities and how they export their goods and how the society and technology may affect the geography. And then I'll go into that. So if I want more of a marshy region, I'll make sure, okay, the central sort of region of this country is supposed to be more swamp-like. So when I go and make the map, uh, it's going to be a swampier sort of area, that sort of thing. But I want to make sure I have all of this ready before I build up my map because I want to make sure my map reflects the history and how everything else goes. Uh, this is very backwards by some how some people do it. Some people build out their map first and then they'll like build out their history from there. Um, I like to have all of the other stuff done first because like I said, uh, world building is sort of on the last sort of pole for me. Um, and I want to make sure that my conflicts and everything are super rich and interesting uh, before I get into the map design because I want to make sure the map design plays into everything that's happening with the world building. I hope that all makes sense. Um, I hope I wasn't rambling too much. I'm still working through actually outlining my story still. If you don't remember by that, I am breaking down two to three movies uh, that sort of have the three different stories that I want to tell. And then I break them down scene by scene. I have a whole video on that. You can check it out. Um, I actually expanded it to five films because uh, I'm really enjoying this breaking down process and seeing how the storytelling is working. And then once I finish that, that's when I'm going to be moving on to world building. So I will finish that tomorrow and I will be moving on to world building and I'll let you guys know how that goes next week. But this video has gone on long enough. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I would love to talk about world building with you guys, um, but this is just a good basis to know, okay, here's how to get on a good track for your world building. Um, if you want any more details, I suggest going to Brandon Sanderson's lecture and if you're all good, go out there, right? I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with. But hopefully this was helpful or insightful for how sort of my writing process is going. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Next week, we are going to be talking about character and I will be giving my debrief of how world building is going for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.